And that is set, and here comes the music. They said it couldn't be done. They said it wouldn't last. White man, black man, America F1. America F1 coming to you straight from San Francisco, California. Sherman Tillman, Michael Lawler. America F1. Best opening music anywhere. Anywhere. Join us today. Have you, you, you have to wait. Say that again, PJ. What'd you say? Have to agree with that. The best intro around. That intro is pretty good. And thanks to Mike. Today we're going to do a preview of the Australian Grand Prix. What our special guest host, PJ. PJ now is going to be joining us to do the pre shows. And then we'll do the post shows with Mike. And then hopefully, once the room gets settled, PJ will join us for both shows or whatever he wants to. He'll just pop in because we'll have a podcast room all ready to go. But we're also going to do a special show uh, in Sonoma. They're having the Porsche, you know, the eight hours and 24 hours. Wow, they have the GT cars. Well, the GT cars for the at least the Porsches are going to be uh, practicing and getting some uh, practice qual times out in Sonoma. And so one of the racers is a good friend of the shows. So we're going to go out to Sonoma and do a look at behind the scenes, uh, what they do to get prepared for the season and interview him, interview the team. So we want everybody to join us uh, for that. And PJ and I are going to go out and do that because uh, Mike is uh, going to be going to Thailand, you know, because he's sick. And uh, that's where he says he wants to retire to. You want to retire in Thailand, PJ? Definitely not. No? Why not? No. It sounds like it sounds yeah. like it'd be fun. My, my friend sent me a video of Thailand the other the other day, and like in like the main city in Bangkok, and just like you just kind of just you walk everywhere, or you ride a bicycle everywhere. It's like you know, I want to. I like to drive, so you know, that's just me. All right, well, we're going to start off today's show. We're going to hop in right into some Formula One news. Susie Wolf has said that she's going to sue the FIA because of how she was treated when they said, because of a rumor, they were doing an investigation. And in light of all the things that happened with Red Bull, she wants to stand up for women's rights and women in the paddock. What do you think about that, PJ? I think she should continue with the lawsuit because they didn't find anything that, you know, they, they just totally investigated her just out of the blue, you know, and put her credibility in doubt. So she totally is valid in in pursuing a lawsuit. I think she is. And let, let's see what one Lewis Hamilton had to say about Susie Wolf. Um, Sue and the FIA. Firstly, I'm incredibly proud of Susie. She's so brave. She stands for such great values. She's such a leader. In a world where often people are silent, for her to be standing up sends such a great message. I love that she's taking it out of this world, feeling it from the outside because there is a real lack of accountability here within this sport, within the FIA. Things that are happening behind closed doors, there is no transparency. There's clearly no accountability. How can you trust the sport and what it happened? What's happening here if you didn't have that? Basically, what he's saying: if there's no transparency, how can you and accountability? How how can we trust that the rulings are going to be just? How can we trust anything that the FIA do? What do you have to say about what one Lewis Hamilton says about Susie Wolf's uh, lawsuit? Well, Lewis has a point. The FAA, it's it's so hard to know because I feel like there's so much internal bias in there, like in the FIA. Like one guy is like going to be biased towards Ferrari or one guy's going to be biased toward Red Bull, but mostly it's been Red Bull these days. But it's just so much shady stuff going on with them, like Ben Suleyam being under investigation. I mean, the FIA investigated the FIA and found that the FIA, Ben Suleiman, didn't do anything wrong. I mean, how? what else other outcome were there, was there going to be? We all knew that that was going to be the outcome. If anybody out there as a Formula One fan thought that somehow the FIA was going to rule against Ben Suleiman, 
you're out of your mind. <laughs> it just wasn't going to happen. The second time they investigated themselves, like with the whole Michael Massey thing, in 2021, they investigated themselves and found out that themselves were not guilty. It's like ridiculous. And it, it leads credence to what Lewis is saying is that if there's no transparency and there's no accountability, how can you call yourself an organization that's supposed to be bound other organizations or other motorsports by the rules if you can't abide by the rules yourself? But it's good for you guys, but not for us. Like you follow the rules, but we won't. It just, I think it might be time. I might, might be time for a new president, like, like a whole house cleaning of the FIA, you know, because there's too much. Oh, this guy used to work for Red Bull. Oh, this guy used to work for Mercedes. Oh, this guy, there's too much industry. Uh, I would say, What's the word, you know, I'm looking for, PJ? You know, the whole industry is just uh, incestuous. That's a good word. Right. I, I think they should either make Sebastian Vettel the FIA president or Ross Braun. I would love those that. Two guys. Yeah, I, I think that those two guys would do a great job, especially uh, Vettel would do a great job with inclusion. And just because you need somebody who raced in the sport, I think sometimes to just a clear... I won't say the clear the air, but just get back to zero. Get back to a place where you should be. Because there's a lot of stupid penalties. And then there's penalties that they should be doing that they don't do. And everyone's just totally frustrated about it, you know. You got the five-second penalty, which really doesn't mean anything. If, like, you ru- if I took you out of the race and I get five seconds, you know, who cares? You're out of the race and I got five seconds. It should be more like a drive through penalty. Some, you know, the punish- punishment should be equal to the crime. Right, because like Max will like do stuff like that and just know the penalty won't be you know won't affect him because like it's just only five seconds you know like, he'll just go for it it's like oh it's worth it because I only get five seconds and I win the race because of that it's like because of the thing you know taking somebody out and the perfect example of that is what happened last week with Magnuson I mean he had twenty seconds in penalties almost beating uh, Ocon's record you know who has like. He has more penalties than uh, anybody on God's green earth. He probably has more penalties than everybody combined. But <laughs> he had all these penalties. He cut the chicane, and he kept my guy Yuki behind him and never gave the place back. He's like, why do I need to give the place back? I got all these penalties. It doesn't matter. And then that, that way that Nico Hulkenberg, he got to score a point because of the, the defense that Magnuson did. That was... So funny. Honestly, he should have been black flagged at that point, but that's another thing. The FIA being stupid. Yeah. He was actively I would like an idiot just so he could like <laughs> you know, just so Nico could score that point. I mean it Nico Nico drove amazing, but Magnuson purposely drove like a you know, like an idiot. So like a total that's retard, like he, yeah. That's when you black flag somebody. That's what they used to do in the past, like when people took each other out, they'd black flag you. Did it on purpose. And that was the total time to do something like that, don't you think? Yeah, like, well, Kevin always gets the meatball flag, whatever, the one where it's like the damage to the car. The, you know, <laughs> the, what's that, the, the black the and white one? one? Is that the black and white the, flag? The, one, the, orange, the orange and blue one, I think. Like the, yeah, that one, he always gets that one. And he like, every time, because he always gets into trouble, he gets into trouble at the beginning of a race. And he's like, oh, you got damage to the car. I got to come in. Always damage to the car with that guy. And not only that, when he gets damaged to the car, he, he just stay. Uh, it might be time. I think Kevin's a good average Formula One driver. He's never really got that shot. I think what when he did, he didn't do. I mean, he was on Mc, McLaren for a while, right? How many years did he do on McLaren? Was it he two? got a podium on debut with McLaren? Yeah, way back. Like I think 2012, so he he's got like he's got speed, but he's just he's like one of the most reckless drivers on the grid, in my opinion. Yeah, I I just think he he just doesn't care because even with his it crash, does. right? He was saying, "Oh well, I didn't give him enough room." Well, of course you didn't give him enough room. <laughs> I mean, you had the whole outside of the track to go to. You know, I'm just surprised. 
said, like, why is like as far as Yuki didn't say, like, why is that hasn't been black flagged yet? Like, he should have brought that up. I feel like he could have, they could have black flagged him. Like, we haven't seen a black flag in Formula One for I don't know how long. Yeah, and if anybody deserves it, I think it would be Kevin Magnuson. He he should have got it that fl- that race. And now let's talk about our predictions for the Australian Grand Prix. All right, well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through each team. We're going to say where we think who's going to finish in, ahead in qualifying, and then we're going to estimate or give our opinion on who's going to finish ahead in the race. Let's start with last place with zero points, the Alpine dumpster fire that is Alpine Racing. Oh. <laughs> this team is like, it couldn't get any more French. It's like a <laughs> complete you know, fiasco, like, like France is always, you know, there's always a riot or a strike going on. Uh, Alpine has become, literally become the French Ferrari at this point, you know, just a huge fiasco. But at least, they, like, Ferrari has a fast car, but Alpine, they have all the problems that Ferrari have, but no fast car. And they're just rudderless. I mean, it's like, they just, they're getting so many different employees per week. It's like Walmart or something, like where the greeter gets fired because he didn't stand in the exact spot for so long because they were new, so they got rid of him right away. They didn't want to give him a chance to warm up his feet and you know get used to the job. Well, that's what Alpine does. You come in, and then you go right out the door. They're like, wait, I didn't even get a chance to get, get my name on the door, and I'm already gone, you know? They need to make sure that Gasly and Alcon stay at the team because that's the only thing that they have going for them at this point. They have two good drivers, and that's literally it. Nothing else. Yeah, and you know that that's I feel bad for Gasly and and I mean Esteban Ocon not as much. I mean he's a, I think he's a good driver. I don't really like him as much as Gasly. I think Gasly deserves a lot better. I thought when he went to that team, I thought they were on the brink of kind of passing the they're in the midfield, but I thought they might push to be in the fifth or fourth place best team, but it just seems like they're going backwards and they're the only one with that dog of a Renault engine. And as a customer team, you thought you would think they would do a lot better. I mean, they're they're like 60, 70 pounds overweight that car. Yeah, the, the the problem is is that they, like you said, they made way too many staff changes, and then there was just inconsistency on car development, and it turned into this. That's that's what happened. What do you think? Give me your prediction on qualifying, and but in the Alpine team, Gasly or Ocon? All right, I'm gonna predict. Okay, I I, I think that Ocon, Ocon and Gasly are like equally skilled. I don't think there's anything between them. Mm-hmm. But like. It's really hard to say because like, I think they're like they're so close. Um, I'm going to say that Gasly qualifies P17 and Alcon P16. That's just that's my my bet. All right, and in the race. Ooh, okay. I, I think the drivers are you know more skilled in the cars. I think they'll make up some positions. I think I think Alcon P14, Gasly P15. That's I think that's that's where they're going to end up. I'm going to go with Gasly out-qualifies Ocon. Ocon DNFs uh, for some reason. Okay. And Gasly somehow gets that bucket of a car to 15th. Okay. <laughs> right. Moving okay, on Gasly, to... Oh, let's go Gasly, ahead. Gasly DNFs in uh, Saudi Arabia, so it, it would make sense if Ocon did, but... I hope not. His team doesn't. They don't deserve any more mishaps. Yeah, I just don't think they're the cars that reliable yet. You know, I just think they have too many problems with not only the car, but it just they just don't. It's just such a dog of a car. I, I just don't think it's going to be making the end. Both cars aren't going to make it to the end of this race. There's just no way. No way. Yeah, and I, I hard to believe that they're going to end up last in the constructors' championship this year. I think there's there's no way they're not ending up last, and it's sad, you know. You, I, I mean, really, kick Sauber and uh, Haas is going to be ahead of them, but yeah, I think I think they're going to be last. Williams is on the up because James Bowles and Alex Albon are working wonders with that team. 
Now let's move on to Visa Cash App R&B with my guy Yuki Sonoda. And what some people are calling Daniel Washed Ricardo. I don't think he's washed yet, but he's getting pretty. I mean, it's only been two races. Let's give him a chance. And he's at his home race, so hopefully, you know, he'll do a lot better, you know. What what's your prediction for uh qualifying with Visa yeah, Cash right. App R and B? I think Visa Cash App <laughs> such a bad name. <laughs> um, Visa Cash I think Yuki outqualifies Daniel again. I yeah. think I think he's got Daniel I think Yuki's got him beat. I don't I don't think that he's gonna I think Yuki's gonna beat Daniel throughout the course of the season, both in the points and in qualifying. I agree. I think um, I think Yuki's at this point in Daniel's career, Yuki's faster. I think Yuki's gonna qualify P eleven, Daniel P thirteen. That's where I'm gonna go. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go with that. I like that. Third you said eleven and th- hmm. Yeah, I'm thirteen. Gonna, I'm gonna go. And then where are they finish in the race? Ooh, okay. Yuki's been on the cusp of points now twice. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's got screwed over twice, which is like unfortunate because the, the team did that dumb team orders <sighs> in Stupid. Bahrain, and then Madison driving like an idiot last time. So I, I think Yuki P10, Daniel P12 in the race. Okay, I'm. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna piggyback off of that. I like that. I, I think Yuki's probably gonna get a point here, and. Eh, it's on the he's on the cusp. If he doesn't get a point, it'll probably be Albon. But more likely, you know what? Oof. I think I think I'm gonna go with Albon on this one. Okay, I'm gonna go. Yuki's gonna go P11, and Daniel's gonna go P14. Oh, okay. Now Daniel's we're getting yeah. Daniel's yeah. He, he might not finish the race either. You know, because he might crash on the first turn. Might pull a Checo and just be like, "I need to win my home race or something." And then yeah, just he dive. might. Yeah, he might dive bomb the first turn because that first turn gets a lot of people. And I, I think he might. Now he might. You know what? He's not going to make it out of this race. I'm going out. I'm going with another DNF. Daniel Ricciardo DNF. Moving, All right. Moving on to the Incredible Hulk car, the Kick Sauber. What is it? Kick, kick, wait, kick. kick Sauber Steak F1 team. Yeah, the Kick Sauber Steak F1. The uh, the Neon Hulk. I like I like I like that car. It's gonna look great at night. I bet when when they get to like Singapore or something like that, it's gonna look great. It's maybe might even glow. You know, if it has day glow at night, I mean, turn out the lights, man. That's gonna be awesome. What? Yeah, that's right. That's right. All right. Give me your prediction for kick Sauber stake F1 team. Who is going to right. qual- out qualify? Uh, this one's tough. Like both Joe and Botas are hard to read right now. I'm going to say Botas out qualifies Joe. Um, so what I have, let's see, I have, don't I have, let's see, 17 and 16. Okay. I'm going to go. P15 for Joe, P14 for Valtteri. Okay. The, I think their cars just... Oh, in the, in, the, in the race? Yeah, in the race... It's, I, I feel like they're going to stay the same. I don't think they're going to make any progress. So. No. I don't really... I see that car kind of... like Since Zhao, Zhao has been there, it's just been like a nothing kind of a car. You're like... They're never going to break top six. They never seem to do like have like this outlier in qualifying where you're like, whoa, look, he qualified fifth or he qualified sixth. It just seems to be steady mediocrity. <laughs> yeah. Botas is like, he's pulling a Kimi Raikkonen at this point. He just, he's just there for have fun. And then like Joe is just super, super like middle of the road. Like just. Like you said, he has never, he hasn't really had any standout performances apart from like once or twice. This probably is his uh, last year. What, what do you think? I mean, I don't know how much they're paying as far as his, his sponsors are paying since he's the only uh, Chinese driver. 
but he hasn't really had a standout race since he's been in Formula One. This is what is is this a third year? I think this is third, third season. season. Yeah, so I can't. And there's 13 seats up for grabs next year. I mean, I yeah. can't, I can't really, exactly. I can't really see him continuing because we both know Kick Sauber is not going to be in the top 10. They might not even score a point this year. You know, they're going to be. It's going to be hard to score a point this year because when you think about it, the top five teams, that's five, that's 10 drivers right there. That's 10 points. Unless one of them DNFs or has a bad race, it's going to be, you know, between Williams and Haas and trying to get that last point. And maybe R&B sometimes, but Kick Sauber and Alpine are just going to be eating dust. Yeah, I 100 percent agree. But you got to remember, one of those drivers in the top ten is Lance Stroll. So that's oh. that's where the that's where the that's where the point comes from. That's what the, oh, Daddy's boy. Hopefully, he won't hit anything this race. All right, I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna say Zhao. No, no, no. I'm gonna say Botas qualifies Zhao, and in the race. Mm, It's not going to really matter. I'm going to go with Botas 16th and Zhao 19th. I don't really think they're, I mean, it's, I don't think they're going to do much. Next, we got the Williams team with Albon, Alex Albon, and Logan Sargent. All right. Uh, Let's see. I'm going to, of course, go with Albon, you know, qualifying ahead of Logan. I'm going to go Logan P20, Alex P12. And in the race? I'm going to go P11, Albon, Logan, DNF. Logan might not. He's another one that next year, he, I don't think he's going to be in the seat anymore. I think that, I think he's, this is it for him. I mean, if he doesn't have a, one breakout race, which I don't see him having. I, I I think this is it for that guy. I don't think he's gonna be in F one next year. What do you think? Yeah, I think Logan should have been dropped last year. He's he's terrible. I'm gonna be honest. Like, I had so much <laughs> I had so much faith in him. Like I wanted I wanted him to succeed so bad because he's an American. But he he been to that car off so many times last year. Like worse than Mick Schumacher and Schumacher. Mick was like was bad, and then. You know, he got a second chance, but even then he was bidding the car. And this year, he's just so far been just as bad as he was last year. So, yeah, yeah, I can't, I don't see any improvement. I mean, and I just don't, they never show him. I mean, <laughs> when you watch the race, they literally never show Logan Sargent. They may show him like when he's like saying something's wrong with the car or he crashes into something or they have a bad pit stop. But other than that, you don't even see Logan Sargent. I mean, they don't even interview the guy on the grid. You know, sometimes you got to find, like, you got to go through the deep uh, bottom of the internet to find, like, Logan Sargent interviews on YouTube, you know? Yeah, I, I want him to be, like, the next big thing so bad, but he just isn't. I want him to be, like, winning races and tearing the national anthem on the podium, you know, in the U.S. national anthem. I know. That... that- so it ain't gonna happen now. though. Yeah, it ain't gonna happen. It, they'd they'd be better off getting one of these look Carlos Herta or one of the guys from the Indy car in that's American that would do a lot better job, I think, than Logan, unfortunately. You know? Let's move on. Yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, Colton Herta and like Pato Award, but Pato Award's not even he's Mexican, even though he's not yeah, he races on Indy car. But those guys have a lot of talent and they definitely could make it in Formula One, but it's just this lack of seats. Yeah, th- I think I th- one. We'll talk about that when we get to Aston Martin. Let's move on to the Haas F1 team with their surprising one point with Hulkenberg and Magnussen. I'm going to start here. I'm going to say Hulkenberg continues outperforming Magnussen because he's just a better qualifier, and we saw that last year. It's a trouncing. I mean, it's not even a comparison in qualifying pace. 
And in the race, uh, in the race, I'm going to go with a double DNF. <laughs> I'm going with a double DNF for the Haas F1 team. And the reason why is turn one is so crazy. I think they're both going to qualify probably in that 9 to 13 range. And going into that first turn, they're, they're going to take each other out. Or they're going to, somebody's going to take them out, or they're going to take, or Magnuson's going to take somebody out. I'm going with a double DNF. All right, I'm going to go Hulkenberg at qualifies Magnuson. Um, I'm going to say Magnuson P19. Uh, let's see, I have what? I have, what do I have to qualify? And I got Yuki P11, L1, P12. Yeah, I'll go Hulkenberg P14. Okay. And then in the race, Magnuson DNF, Hulkenberg. I'm going to say stays P14. All right. Okay. I'm, there's going to be a lot of DNFs because this is a faster track. There's a lot of high speed corners. And I think comparatively to the first two races, there's just a lot more chances for cars to overheat and for the engines just to give away, especially since it's the beginning of the season and there's gremlins in some of these cars. And I don't think all the teams have all the gremlins worked out. Obviously Mercedes doesn't. And I think there's going to be some uh, DNFs, not only due to crashing, but just due to the cars, just not uh, in the peak performance windows of the season yet. So moving on to Aston Martin, who rumor is that Amico, which is a big, I think they're a big gas company. They've yeah, oil, oil. oil, oil and gas. I think they're the oil and gas company for the Saudi. Uh, for, they're the country's oil and gas. Like the country controls it. Like the the Saudi prince controls the company. So basically, right. yeah. saying that they have more money than God, right? Yeah. So Petronas is like that for Malaysia. So it's like a state-run, you know, oil company. You know, Amico and Petronas. And the rumor is, is that they already are minority stake owners of Aston Martin. And the rumor is, is that they are going to offer to wholesale buy the whole team. And then they're going to write a blank check to Max Verstappen and Adrian Newey to come to Aston Martin and basically say, we'll give you whatever you want. I heard that rumor, but I don't. That one sounds a bit far fetched. But like, if it is true, I feel like Max and Newey would be stupid, like not to jump on board because like they're just gonna get paid like whatever they ask. I mean, like Max already has the success, but if he wants to just make the money, just go to Aston. Yeah, I mean, if they if they say we're gonna give you what Lewis got, we're gonna give you a hundred million a year. And you can have some race foundation or whatever you want. You can get a race team of your own. And they keep Adrian Newey, who wants to be close to home in England, since they have a new Aston Martin uh, factory out in England. He could stay home and he can, they'll probably let him do not only the F1 cars, but he wanted to get into the hyper cars. So they'll let him design probably whatever he wants and give him they'll just throw money at him kind of like the 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 live golf of uh <laughs> formula one <laughs> yeah and then it'll also they'll finally get rid of stroll with that team as well that's the that, that, that is the one. only way to get rid of lance isn't it yeah it is what? and if if like if the team if they keep fernando then it's gonna be fernando and max and oh boy that'd be a fun title fight to watch I, I, man, I said it last year. I'll, I'll pay to be the janitor if, if, <laughs> if they have Fernando Alonso and Max on the same team. I, <sighs> the drama would just be incredible because you know, if they're in the same car and the cars are equal, there's going to be a lot of out qualifying that Fernando does on. He's going to go all through all the shenanigans that Fernando does. <laughs> You know, I wholeheartedly 
Dave Fernando would beat Max. That's just that's that's hot hot take, but I feel like they're equally as fast, but Fernando has more experience, and I feel like that would end up getting him the win over a season. Yeah, because I think I would love to see some competition for Max, not only just for qualifying, but in the race. Like, I mean, Checo is the perfect foil for him because you know he's not going to give him that much of a challenge and he knows he can soak up the bulk of the points and he knows the team is basically made around him. But if somebody like Fernando came into the picture, then it's a whole different ball game. You know, and I don't think, to be honest, I don't think Max would want something like that. I think Max, he doesn't want. I can't. I can't wait till he comes to the back of the grid where he comes back to the pack. Like it happens to all the stars. It happens to Schumacher. It happens to Vettel. It happens to Hamilton. I want to see him starting like fifth and sixth and seventh and see how he deals with that. You know, because I already know how he's going to deal with it. It's going to be back to crash stepping. He's just every time he well, he, the only time he's ended up back there was in Singapore and he threw a fit about that. So we'll see what what happens if he ever ends up back there. What do you say for I mean, we all both know that Alonzo's gonna out qualify Stroll, so that's just a forgiving that's a foregone conclusion. Wouldn't you agree, PJ? Yeah, I'm gonna go Fernando P five, Lance P ten. I like that. I, I I like that. Oh, you think Lance is gonna qualify P ten? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to give Lance, and hold your horses. I'm going to say Lance is going to qualify P9. Ooh. <laughs> he's going to be on his game today. You know, he he's in Australia. He's, he's well rested. You know, he's going to be out there partying a little bit. He might even uh, hang out with Yuki, who everyone wants to hang out with at the parties, apparently. And he's going to come <laughs> ready to go for once and he's going to actually do good this is going to be one of those land stroll every seven races where he qualifies halfway decent and he has a good race i'm going land stroll p9 and fernando p5 yeah i like i like fernando at p5 i like i like that now to in my opinion the most disappointing team on the grid right now the we, we didn't go over the race. Huh? That was qualifying. We didn't th- go over the race for Aston Martin. I thought we did. I thought we said, I said uh, he's going to be ninth and Alonso's going to, oh, that was just for qualifying? Yeah. Okay. What, what's your race prediction? Uh, Fernando stays P5, Lance stays P10. No, no surprises there. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Yuki's already P10. So I'm going to say um, Lance DNF, sorry. I'm going to go Lance with uh, P9. I'm going to say that Alonzo goes, yeah, P5, fifth. That's about about right for for where, the, where their pace is right now. And f- to the most disappointing team on the grid for me, the Mercedes-AMG Patronus F1 team with the unmentionable Russell, who thinks he's better than everybody on the grid and it's only one run race. And the incomparable Lewis Hamilton. But for whatever reason, I'm going to go with Russell's going to out-qualify Hamilton again because it just seems like that's just the way it is right now. And in the race, let's see, I'm going to go with Russell qualifies P6, Hamilton P7, and in the race, Hamilton... Hamilton six, Russell seven. You know what? I was, that's exactly what I was going to say. Exactly. Yeah, I wanted to say anything. That's just, that's the jacket exactly I was going to predict. Russell P six, Hamilton P seven, and then the reverse in the race. Exactly right. Yeah, I just think for for whatever reason, Lewis just doesn't seem interested, and in, he's always trying all these different things and qualifying and in practice right now because he's not comfortable with the car. And I think Russell just, whatever he finds, he just leaves it. And I think he, right now, for whatever reason, he can just drive whatever. The dodgy car doesn't matter to him. And I think Lewis is so used to having his car dialed in that now that it's not dialed in, he's going back to, like, just trying everything. Just throwing everything to the board and whatever sticks, sticks, you know? 
Lewis right now doesn't give a crap about Mercedes. He's just there, like, whatever. I'm going to Ferrari next year. This team can suck it. I don't give a crap. I'm just going to just drive, like, well enough to where I'd, you know, score points, and that's it. That's that's what Lewis's is, his mindset is right now. Well, that, that's why I say that they should have transferred this year, man. They should have just said, you know how sometimes a couple of years ago they let Alonzo go early to McLaren? I just think they should just call it a day and let science come to Mercedes for the rest of the year and let Lewis go on to Ferrari for the rest of the year and just call it a day and just say hey, like a transfer fee. Just because Lewis, I saw an interview with him and George today and he just looks like whatever, man. He's just A, B, C, D, E, F, G. He's just going through the numbers like like he doesn't care. You know, and now George is doing the, he's the one leading the uh, interview and he's the one that, you know, they're propping up right now so he can be the team leader. And Lewis is just probably like, yeah, whatever, go ahead, do that. He has to do it next year. So I'll take a back seat. Yeah, I feel like Mercedes also need a driver like Science because, like, he's really, really good at car development and, like, feedback. And Mercedes is stuck with car development. They don't know how to move forward. Or Science can provide that feedback and how to improve the car. Yeah, I think Lewis tried to. Remember, if, if you watch, oh, I know everybody, I watched all the drives survive. I just do. It's just part of what, it's part of the gig. You got to watch the dang show so people you know what people are talking about. And you got to watch it so you can criticize it or praise it, whatever. But on that show, you could, Lewis talked about, well, I told them that the, the front end was, you, you know, the, the back end was bad. The wing was dodgy. It was too draggy. And that they needed to improve that. And they t- basically told me that they know what they were doing and that I should stay out of it. And he's like, well, I didn't want to step on anybody's toes. So I stayed out of it and kind of took a back seat. And then later on in the season, we revisited it. And they're like, well, you were right. You know, and I was like, well, yeah, I know I'm right. I drive the damn car. You know, he's, the guy's a seven time world champion. He knows what he's talking about. But Mercedes decided to do it on their own. And that's why I really think that they really miss Nicky Lauda. Because have you noticed that ever since Nicky kind of passed, the team has kind of been on, on the downturn? Yeah, you can't put a price on Nicky's experience. Like, same with uh, Alain Prost. As soon as he left Alpine, look what happened. Yeah, I think I think people don't give enough credit to Nicky. And I think he had... a. Because remember, when he was with Ferrari, he was doing a lot of the designs and he was doing a, a lot of the things that they brought to the car. Like, Nicky either designed it himself or he was the one with the ideas. He Remember, if you watched anything or you know anything about Nicky Lada's life, like, he was, like, an engineer himself. Like, he was the one, like, developing things, saying, well, we should try this. Well, hey, let's try this. I'll. This is what you need to do. You know, he's the one who got the Ferrari lighter, you know, have him make different parts out of different materials. And I think Mercedes just with with the brain drain, so many of their engineers going to like R&B and Ferrari and and here and there. I think they've lost a lot. I I think they've lost something. Yeah, I also feel like they were a little bit overconfident going into this set of regulations because they're like, yeah, we dominated for eight years. And then like, they just thought, yeah, we'll, we'll be fine. And then just didn't put as much effort into it. And then now here they are stuck at, they've been stuck in the midfield now for three seasons. And I said it last year, Mercedes Benz, welcome to the midfield. They're a midfield team. And then when Hamilton leaves, you know, they're going to be scratching for fifth and sixth and seventh, you know, like they are now. Probably they might even move down. I agree, but I feel like the, the team is still fundamentally strong. It has Toto. It, George is a good driver, despite him being a little bit of a, you know even being, being cocky. But if they get someone like Science on board, the team will, will move back up to being a top top running team pretty quickly. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see who they put in that seat next year. You know. Yeah. It's a, Someone like Kimi and Tonelli in there, that's just gonna that's it. That's the final nail in the coffin. Like he's, you know, a young talent, but he's got talent, but he doesn't have experience, and then they can't develop the car. So they're just gonna they're just gonna be stuck in the midfield. Yeah. I mean, I would say Kimi goes to Williams to take uh Logan Sargent's spot, and then you bring Carlos Sainz in to Mercedes. And if they did that, I think 
George would probably still just like um, Charles is ahead of uh, Carlos in uh, qualifying. I think George would be a better qualifier, but I also think that Carlos would be just like Hamilton is better in race because I think he has better race craft than George does. True, I, I think that science would also would be better than Ch- Russell in qualifying. I feel like Leclerc is a better qualifier than Russell. And science is already like really close to him. I feel like that would probably give science the edge over George. Well, I think, I mean, we'll get to them, but I, I think Leclerc's the best qualifier on the in the grid right now. You know, I think. Yeah, I, I, what'd you say? Did I, I said I, I agree. I think he's he's by far the fastest driver over one single lap. Yeah. Yeah, I think, and if he if he was uh, in the Red Bull, there'd be like he'd dominate. I mean, he's already you know doing well in the Ferrari as a qualifier, but in the Red Bull, there, no one would touch him. He, he'd destroy Max. I think he's he's just that good over one lap. His problems are come into play where it's. I think he has good racecraft, but unlike Carlos, he's not able to tell his engineer like no we're not doing that no try this like carlos seems to be able to think as he's racing a lot quicker and charles kind of accepts what the team says since he's been a ferrari guy his whole career and he's he wants to be you know that's what his lifelong dream is so i don't think he ever wants to kind of rock the boat but Carlos doesn't care. Carlos is like, I know what's best for me, and this is what I'm going to say. And he says it. He's very matter of fact over the radio. And Charles is, seems to be a little bit more uh, diplomatic and going toward whatever his engineer says. Yeah, I agree. I feel like Charles doesn't. He doesn't have like science has that ability to come up with strategies like mid race, where Charles just focuses on driving and, you know, what's the team tell him what to do, but science is able to do both. Yeah. And I, th- I think that's what separates them right now. So it's going to be interesting to see what Lewis and their dynamic. I mean, they already seem like good friends now, but you know, once you're on the same team they're you know, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. Because I feel like Lewis has better race craft, but then Charles has better, like, like you said, one lap pace. So it's going to be similar to how it is right now, but Lewis has more experience than Carlos, obviously. So we'll see how that goes. Moving on to Macaworld, the McLaren, the peach, the papaya. I don't. Oh, I wish they would get rid of that damn papaya. But anyway, um, I really. This might be the year, and I might be one of the only people saying that. But I think Oscar is going to outpoint Norris this year. I really do. I th- I think he's I, he looks good, man. He really looks good. I know Norris Norris is so like he's super super good. I I don't I really can't see Oscar outscoring him. I think this is the year though that Lando wins his first race as much as I You think so? Happen, I feel like I really, really think so. He's he's been he's a race winning driver, but he's just never had the chance to win. I mean, he did in Russia, but he screwed it up. But he's never been able to get that win. Like Carlos, he is able to. He was actually able to get that win. And same with George. But like Lando, he's he's got the talent like Carlos and George does, but just hasn't been able to do it. Yeah, but Carlos has won two races, not just yeah, one. he has. He's got the he has more consistency and over George and Lando, but like. They, to me, those three drivers, like Carlos, Lando, and Russell, they're like in the same tier to me. So, like, Lando's just the one out of those that hasn't won the race. I won a race yet. He deserves to win one, in my, in my opinion. So, this year is going to be the year for for Lando Norris. I hope so because I feel like it's it's already been like two seasons overdue. I I just think the R&B is so damn good. I don't see anybody else. Winning, a, I think. I don't think anybody else is going to win a race if it's not Ferrari. I don't think any of the other teams are going to win. I don't think. I don't think Mercedes, Aston Martin, or McLaren are going to win a race this year. I think it's going to be just like last year. It's going to be all Red Bull and Ferrari might win more than one. They might win two, two races, maybe three. But I, I just don't. Yeah, see, you I, know. 
I don't I agree see it. Ferrari I can see Ferrari winning races too, but I, I feel like the Red Bull won't be as dominant once they go to the, the zero pod concept that they're that they're doing in J- post Japan. Mm. Mm. Yeah, because the tracks get a lot different after these two. You know what? You yeah, know, that that might happen, PJ, because I think with with a little bit of development and then more track specific, you know, setups, they they. McLaren might be able to squeak in one. Okay, all right, I can see it. Give me your predictions for qualifying for McLaren. All right, I'm gonna go. So what do we got here? We got Lewis and George and top ten and Fernando, uh, Lance. Okay, I'm gonna go. Lando P8, Oscar P9. That's that's where I'm going. Okay, and in the race, I'm going the same. In the points, but not not super high in the points. Just P eight, P nine. I'm going totally crazy here. I mean, I'm out of my mind right now. I'm gonna go this Oscar P four in the race. Lando Lando's gonna have a problem. I'm gonna go. Lando's gonna go. P8 and in qualifying in the race you just, I, think you just, I don't even know what's going to happen in qualifying between those two but in the race I'm going to go Oscar P4 Norris P8 I don't know what's going to happen in qualifying with those two I'm going to have to I'm going to Reserve that prediction until I see practice number two. Uh, and moving on to Ferrari, where we have Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz returning to the car after we had Oliver Berman in the car last week, who had an extraordinary race, everyone says, and finishing P7 last week. And he's in Australia just in case that... Carlos Sainz can't make it, but uh, seeing some video of Carlos Sainz, he looks all right. He's moving still kind of gingerly, but we'll see. I hope that Oliver got another chance this week because then we'd really get to see what a different track, what he's made of. But now that I think they're going to be racing uh, F2, if he doesn't win, is it a disappointment, PJ? If Oliver Berman doesn't win uh, F2 this week, what do you think? Yeah, I would, I'd, I'd say he needs to win F2 this week. Um, I, I think that he pretty much has a seat reserved for him now, like after that. I feel like Haas would be stupid to not give him a seat if like they did a drop Magnuson and then pick up Oliver. Because like, they need some... I mean, they had some young talent in there before, but it didn't go well. I think they need to give Oliver a chance because he, he looks more promising than, for example, Mick and Mazepin were. So I think he needs to get a seat at Haas for sure next year. Yeah, I I, th- I agree with that. Matter of fact, he's. I almost think we can pencil him in. I mean, unless he gets another uh, trial race and he does like extraordinarily bad, I, I can't see him not being in the Haas next year. I just can't see it. And what's your prediction with uh, the Ferrari boys? All right, I'm going to go Charles Leclerc P2, Carlos Sainz P3 in qualifying. And in the race? You're gonna, okay, I'm gonna, I'm fine. it's time for my outrageous take. Let's hear it. Let's go. Let's go. All right, I'm, I'm going to go Charles Leclerc P1. Huh? huh? And then Car- Carlos Sainz P3. <laughs> so that's, that's my outrageous take. Are you sure? Did you just say yeah. that Charles Leclerc is going to win this race? Yep. Huh? Are you okay? Let's not forget this is the one track where he has a grand slam on from 2022. Remember that? He got pole, led every single lap, and won the race, and got fastest lap. All right. I'm like, let's Charles Leclerc P1. I am going to go with... Mm, Charles Leclerc P1 in qualifying 
Carlos Sainz P3 in qualifying. And then, unfortunately, he's going to go P2 because Verstappen's going to pass him. He's gonna classic. Sque- <laughs> he's going to squeeze him out on the first turn and push him out. And instead of not getting out of the way, like Charles should crash into him and just say, I'm not moving. He's going to move. Yeah, like Carlos hmm? Win the race. If that happens, if, you know, if Charles takes out Max and it gives Sainz and or Checo a chance to win. So give us something interesting. But I, I hope and pray hope. for that. Because yeah. I'm tired of everybody fighting Lewis Hamilton when Lewis is ready to pass him and just opening up the barn door when Max Verstappen is coming. You know, like they just, Ole, here you go. Go on, Max. Go ahead. Oh, oh, Lewis is behind me. Oh, I'm going to I'm going to double move like like Norris did last week. Like I'm going to move left and then I'm going to move right and then I'm gonna move left again or triple move. I mean, they don't want Lewis to pass, but. When it's Max Verstappen, it's like, hey, he, hey, do you want some wine? Do you want some cookies? Hey, hey, do you want some cheese? Do you want some crackers, Max? Hey, here you go. Go on, Max. Go on, Max. Well, I'm tired of, afraid of him. Everyone's afraid of Max because they know he'll just crash into you. But there's two drivers that aren't. Lewis Hamilton and Fernando Alonso. They're the only two that can deal with him. But that's what you have to do. You have to say, you have to make a stand and say, okay, if we crash, we crash. I'm not moving. Yeah, that's why Lewis and Max always come together because Lewis is like, I don't give a shit. Like, let's crash. Uh, like, you know what I mean? Like, he doesn't care because Max will crash, but Lewis is like, I'm not moving. And then Fernando, will usually, he's so experienced, he'll find a way to like overtake Max or defend against Max without crashing. But he's just the minister of defense, as we all know. Moving on to the team. The Red Bull Racing Team of Controversy. <laughs> Maybe they should change their name to Red Bull Controversy F1 Team. Carla, we got Max Super Max Verstappen and Sergio Checo Perez. What do you think? All right, I'm going, obviously, I'm going Max P2 in qualifying. No, Max P1 in qualifying. Checo P4 in qualifying, and then in the race, Max P2, Checo P4. Okay, I'm going to go Max P2 in qualifying, Checo P4, and in the race, Max P1, Perez P3. So it'll be, let's see if I can figure this out. I'm going to go. So the Red Bull, yeah. Ferrari, I mean, Ferrari, Red Bull, Ferrari. Yeah, so I'm gonna go. Gonna I'm gonna go Max for P1, Charles Leclerc, Leclerc. P2, uh, Carlos. No, Carlos. No, no, no. Uh, Carl. I'm gonna go with Carlos. No, no, no. Checo P3, Carlos P4, Pastrami P5, or or Oscar P5, uh, Lewis six, Russell seventh, Norris eighth. No, damn it. I forgot Fernando. Fernando. This is tough. Because <sighs> Fernando's definitely going to be up there. <sighs> what if he doesn't? If you want to hear mine, then you can go back over yours. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, my delusional take of <laughs> Charles Leclerc. Charles Leclerc, Charles Leclerc P1, All right. Max for 7 P2. Carlos Sainz P3, okay. Sergio Perez, Echo Perez P4, Trent mm-hmm. Alonso P5, Lewis Hamilton P6, George Russell P7, Lando Norris P8, Oscar Piastri P9, Lance Stroll P10. No, no, Lance Stroll DNF, Yuki Tsunoda P10. Huh. That's I, my top 10. I, I like that. I like that, but I have the only difference, I, I think Leclerc's going to be second. Because the only way Leclerc or Max won't be one and two is if they crash into each other going into the corner. Yeah, Max is not going to crash himself out or D- or have a mechanical DNF. He's only going to crash into Lewis, Charles, or Fernando, or Sainz, or something like that. Because like, those are the only drivers that can give him trouble. Yeah, everybody just else Checo. gets out of the way, yeah. Checo will just get, oh, let Max through, and he won't argue and just let him through. All right. Well, 
PJ's going with Charles Leclerc to win the Australian Grand Prix. I'm going to go with the old reliable for his ninth win in a row, Max Verstappen. But my outlier is I have um, Carlos Sainz on the podium also with a double Ferrari podium with one um, Red Bull racer. And you have two two Red Bulls with the with the Ferrari? Is that what you have? I got Leclerc P1, Verstappen P2, and then Science P3, then Checo P4. So, so I, would, Ferrari. I would love that. I would love to see that happen. Love it. But I just don't think it's going to happen. I don't. The only way Max doesn't win is either a DNF or someone crashes into him. I just can't see. You want to hear hmm? take I have? Yeah, let's hear it. You want to hear another but it, it's this time it's the whole season, not just this race. I believe that Ferrari will win the constructors championship this year. Oh my god. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Are you okay? Did you did you have you been up I'm all night? Ferrari I'm a Ferrari uh, fan, so I'm not okay. So well, but my my reasoning is I feel like well, because we've had signs out of the car, but once he's back in there, they'll be able to pick up those, like, you know, hopefully some wins, and then the ones, you know, ones and two, twos and threes a lot more than Checo's able to pick up twos and threes to eventually be secure the constructors. And then That's kick, and then kick Carlos, Carlos Sainz out of the car. Well, then he put Lewis in there, but then, like, you know, Sainz will go, he, I, I know science will find a good seat. I'm not really worried about that. So I don't see that happening only because I just see Max winning too many races. Remember, Max could have won the Constructors Championship all by himself last year. He didn't even need a teammate. Yeah, that's the one thing that could screw up my plan is if Max just wins every race. But if he doesn't, then I see Ferrari win the Constructors. I, I would love that to happen. I would love anybody else other than... Red Bull to win, but I don't. I just can't see it happening in this era of ground effect car. I just can't. I just think they have the best car by miles. I don't even think they've turned up their engine for a full race yet. I mean, they're probably 20, 25 laps into the race. They already have their engines turned down. I just don't. We don't even know what the full pace of that car really is if they were challenged, and they haven't been challenged, so we haven't really got to see the full pace of that car and i think they have probably a couple second or two left in that car at least at least so i I just don't see ferrari winning the constructors i just don't see it and then we also have to take into play what happens when ferrari finally starts coming under some pressure and we know what their strategies like and we know what their pit stops like so if we take what we saw last year and we put it to this year, there's going to be some Ferrari mistakes, which I hope doesn't happen, but we all know it will. Yeah. If they, if they smell that like, you know, they're actually able to win the constructors, they'll start doing dumb shit. <laughs> that they always, like they always do. Huh? They're yeah. like, oh, we're going to do, do like, we can't have this happen because like we're dropping Carlos next year. And like, we can't have him win the constructors for us. So let's just screw him over. Like that's the kind of thing they would, they would do that because, like, that's Ferrari. Yeah, because they would want, you know, to look bad. But, the, you know, the bottom line is I was listening to, um, I think it was uh, Vasseur. He was talking about, you know, the, the pundit asked him if he had regretted bringing Lewis to the car with, with the great uh, showing from Ali Berman. And he said, it's Lewis Hamilton. What are you talking about? If you can take Lewis, <laughs> you take Lewis. And... That's what I have to say to all the fans who are thinking that maybe they should bring Ali Berman instead of Lewis. I mean, when you bring Lewis so that, in, everything goes up. Really? You know, that's just a bad take. Like, everything goes up. Why would you, first of all, why would you take Ali Berman over even Carlos Sainz? Like, let alone Lewis Hamilton, you know? It's like, what? That's just ridiculous. Like, he would, there's a million other guys. You'd take Fernando, you'd take Norris, you'd take... uh Piastri, you take Russell. I mean, there's you. You take uh, 
You take Checo. Checo. You take Albon. Hell, I'd even take Hulkenberg, who I really wish. Awesome or Jazz. I, I really wish Hulkenberg gets a good seat next year. I really wish he doesn't stay with Haas and he moves up the grid and get, get into a good seat. I really do. I want him to be on the podium so bad. He needs to go to Audi because he has to go to Sauber, but he'll just he's already used to being in a shit team, so he'll just go there for one year and then Audi will take over. Well, that's what they're saying. You know that, right? That's what they're saying. It's going to be if... if um, Carlos Sainz doesn't go to Mercedes. They're saying that it'll be him with Nico Hulkenberg in the Audi project. Oh, yeah. At, um, at Sauber? Yeah. So I, I'll, I'll go with that. Just anywhere for him to get a chance at getting a podium before his career is over. I think he deserves yeah, it. Yeah. I, I can see that team working really well, though. Like Sainz and Hulkenberg, it already happened once. But that's when Sainz was like really young. But mm-hmm. I. That's like a solid, like, you know, race winning podium team, getting all the points possible team. Like, like Hulkenberg will finally get a podium. I feel like if that team's competitive, maybe even win a race is like, he's he's that good of a driver. He's never got the chance. Yeah, I think he is too. I think I th- he just had. He's the ultimate bad luck driver. <laughs> I remember. I yeah, don't know how many races where he he was going to get a podium and car would fail or he'd clip a wall or so, just something stupid would happen and you're like oh man nico well last year in the austria sprint race he was on the verge of getting a podium i was like jumping up and down on my seat like saying this is gonna be the day and then of course fucking the red bulls come up and overtake him I'm like oh my god well, I, I thought that was it we hope we're glad you could join us for this hour of uh the preview for the Australian Grand Prix. Now remember, we are doing another show, uh, the post-Australian Grand Prix, or the review of the Australian Grand Prix, but what we really want to talk about is we have an upcoming special in Sonoma where we're going to be interviewing some of the Porsche racers who are getting ready for their you know season. What, 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 do, what do they call it, PJs? The, the long distance? What are they, what are, what's that touring call? What's that, what's that race? Is it WRC? Sure. Huh? Yeah, w- WEC. We- they call it WEC, like World Endurance Championship. Right. So he doesn't do the full, like the 24 hours. I think he's he does like the eight-hour ones and the 12-hour ones. So I guess they have different different people they put in, in the car for different races. That is that right? Yeah, it's also been 12 hours, like Sebring and stuff like that, and like um, Daytona, all that fun stuff. Yeah, so next week we're going to be interviewing um, the Porsche's OnlyFans car, Alex Bogle, who drives for OnlyFans Porsche, and we'll be- Wait a second. Hmm? Fans? OnlyFans. It's sponsored by Only. Yes. That's that's. There's, but that Porsche is sponsored by OnlyFans. It's the number 43 OnlyFans car. Tell your dad, dude. He'll flip out. The car, get some the, car, the car is number 43. It's an OnlyFans car. And it's a Porsche. <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> oh. That's... that's- so we'll, we'll get to tour the paddock. We'll check out behind the scenes. We're going to go into the garage. We're going to check out the OnlyFans car. We're actually going to even be in the uh, tour bus for Porsche. So me and PJ are going to have an all-day uh, backstage uh, affair in Sonoma. With And we want to thank uh, OnlyFans Racing. We want to thank Alex Vogel for the invite. We're looking forward to it. And thank you for joining America F1 in our pre-Australian Grand Prix show. Thanks to PJ for joining us. PJ is going to be joining us for all the races on the pre-game. We'll be doing pre-games with PJ and post, post-race post with uh, Mike. And then once the podcast room gets ready, hopefully we'll all three be together. And we're happy to have PJ join our family in America F1. A lot of you guys have been asking about PJ and hopefully you'll get to see his face soon because, you know, he he kind of looks like Carlos Sainz a little bit. So for all you ladies out there, I know you'll be really happy to see that. And other than that, thank you for joining America F1. And keep on racing, everybody.